pretty, powerful, and portable. We've got Gateway's new T6836 on this episode of Gadget. We'd like to thank our production sponsors, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway. And welcome back to Gadget at the Techstop.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Ballasar. I'm a Catholic priest in the Society of Jesus, the largest religious order in the Catholic Church. And we're here in Henderson, Nevada, overlooking Las Vegas. Now let's get straight to the tech, because we've got a lot of ground to cover. Gateway just sent us their brand new T6836. It's a new line of notebooks that goes somewhere below their M-series and their P-series, which we have previously reviewed on this show. Now, the idea is to make a smaller, more portable notebook that still has plenty of power and battery life for that back-to-school someone or that mobile professional. Now, we've had a couple of days to throw every benchmark we could find at it and maybe compare it to a few of the other notebooks that we have in our inventory, and this is what we found. At first glance, the T-Series notebooks don't seem to be all that different from Gateway's M-Series. They're styled the same, with glossy covers and latchless soft-closed lids, However, when you put the T-Series on top of its bigger brother, you can see why these two notebooks are from different lines. While the M-Series is more of a desktop replacement that is small and light enough to travel, the T-Series is designed to be mobile. The T6836 is based on Intel's Core 2 Duo T5750 CPU running at 2 GHz with 2 MB of L2 cache and a 667 MHz frontside bus. It has two sticks of 2GB DDR2667 memory for a total of 4GB of memory and a 250GB 5400 RPM SATA drive. Networking features include a Gigabit Ethernet port, ABG wireless, and a 56K modem. Gateway has topped it off by including Windows Vista Home Premium 64-bit. The screen is a 14.1-inch LCD that is of the same high quality that we've seen on Gateway's other notebooks. Its glossy widescreen display is absolutely gorgeous, with vibrant colors and great contrast. The screen is driven by an Intel X3100 graphics media accelerator with up to 384 megabytes of shared memory and topped by a 1.3 megapixel camera embedded into the bezel of the lid, giving you both video and still photo capabilities. The left side of the notebook has two USB 2.0 ports, a 5-in-1 digital media card reader, an express card slot, and the hardware switch to control the Wi-Fi. The right side of the T6836 has a third USB port and an 8x CD DVD burner with label flash technology. This means that if your media supports it, you'll be able to burn labels directly onto your CD or DVD. A nice convenience for those who dislike marking their media with pens or using the drawer full of mystery CDs approach. The front of the notebook has a microphone and headphone jack, which are complemented by two small and yet surprisingly decent sounding speakers above the keyboard. The trackpad is responsive but not overly sensitive, and it comes complete with scrolling functions for the Web Surfing Pro. The keyboard isn't full size like it is on the M series, but it doesn't feel cramped, even for my long, fat fingers. Above the keyboard, Gateway provides a one-touch function button for launching Microsoft Media Center, as well as a row of multi-function keys to control forward, reverse, play, pause, stop, and mute. To the right of the media buttons is a touch-sensitive volume control panel, with a set of blue LEDs to indicate the volume setting. Battery life on the T6836 was phenomenal. Partly because of the 6-cell lithium-ion battery, and partly because of Gateway's tight integration with Vista's power subsystem. When we ran the notebook in full power mode, pegging the CPU at 100%, powering wireless and Ethernet, jacking the screen to full brightness, we managed to clock 2 hours and 47 minutes. When we used balance mode, the screen at medium brightness, Wi-Fi on, hard drives at 10 minutes spin down, we averaged a whopping 4 hours and 36 minutes. When we pushed it into aggressive power savings, Wi-Fi off, screen at lowest brightness, 5 minute drive spin down, we averaged 5 hours 42 minutes. Our real-world performance was mixed. The 4 gigabytes of memory definitely speeds up most operations, and the Core 2 Duo CPU has more than enough power for pretty much any program you might use on a laptop. But program times felt a little sluggish due to the 5400 RPM hard drive. When we replaced the drive with a 7200 RPM drive, 
the T6836 screamed. Of course, doing that will increase the amount of heat that the laptop generates and decrease its battery life. Additionally, the use of an integrated video chipset instead of a dedicated graphics chip and memory like in the M151X means that you will not be playing high-performance games on this machine. The T6836 was designed for business, not pleasure. This is shown out by the PC Mark Vantage scores for the T6836 versus those for the M151X. Though the M151X trounces the T6836 in memory performance, video and gaming, and edges the T-series in music suite and hard drive operations, the T6836 still reported a better PC Mark number because its faster CPU and larger memory bank made non-visual applications fly. Essentially, for anything that didn't involve high-performance real-time graphics rendering, like video and photo editing or any number of non-game-like applications, the T6836 performs better than the M151X. That isn't to say that the T6836 is the ugly stepchild of video performance, just because of its integrated graphics solution. Because of the power of the CPU and the generous helping of memory, the T6836 has more than enough oomph to enable all of Vista's eye candy and run multiple HD streams without so much as a stutter. The T6836 comes with a one-year warranty and is available now from Best Buy for about $800. Now I have to mention a few things about Gateway's new notebook strategy. You see, Gateway has discontinued direct sales, which means that you can no longer go to gateway.com to buy a notebook. Instead, you're going to be able to find them in your local electronics reseller, like Fry's Electronics or Best Buy or Circuit City. The idea for Gateway was to sort of get rid of all that back-end stuff, get rid of the paperwork, and instead just concentrate on engineering some really good product. Now, Time will tell if this is a winning strategy, but there is something to be said about being able to go into a store, physically touch the notebooks, the various models that they have, find the one that's for you, and then to bring it home that day. So uh, we'll see if this is, turns out to be a win for consumers. Now, as for the notebook itself, I have to mention that the, the other notebook we compared it against, the M series, the M151X, is actually no longer in production. That's been discontinued by Gateway in favor of new models of the M series. But the comparison is still valid because it shows you the different levels of notebook. You've got the P series for those who need no compromise gaming, but maybe not so much of a portable type laptop. You've got the M series for those who want power, but the ability to drop it into a bag and carry it. And then you've got the T series. I mean, it is the lightest of the gateway notebooks at only five and a half pounds. It's got that stellar battery life, anywhere from, from three to four, five and six hours of power, depending on how you use it. And I mean, it really does have the horsepower, the CPU power, and the memory to back up whatever applications you might be running on it. That being said, there are a few things that we'd like to see changed about the T series as it evolves. First of all, the graphics. Now, I understand why they went with an integrated graphics solution. I mean, it, it lowers the amount of power consumption, it lowers the price, but at the same time, it really kind of cripples this notebook, and, and that's not cool. With this kind of a CPU, with this much memory, to be bottlenecked by an integrated graphics solution just means that uh, you've got a lot of power that you can't let out. I mean, I understand that you can't always put a dis discrete graphics adapter in there. It's going to mess up power, it's going to mess up price, but even a low-end part, something that was power efficient, would allow it to sort of uncork a lot of its potential. I'm not saying that I want to be able to play Crisis at full resolution on this little baby, but it would be nice to have something that would let me play games at a lower resolution or without all the eye candy. Secondly, I'd have to say that the, the lack of a FireWire port was a little bit annoying. Now, I know this is not going to affect a lot of people. If you don't use FireWire, you don't care. But to have three USB ports and no FireWire means that we couldn't plug in our cameras where we were actually using this to edit the last couple of episodes. And it did a really good job, but we've had to go through a, a weird setup using either the PC Express slot or a USB to FireWire adapter. And while that works, it would be nice to have it native on the computer. That being said, it's still an incredible machine. It's very competent, it's very powerful, and for $800, it's not going to break the bank. I mean, you're looking at a machine that could be the perfect gift for your back-to-school student or for the professional who's wanting something a little easier to carry around. If that's you, or if you know someone like that, you may want to check out the Gateway T6836. It could be the laptop for you.
Now, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the Gateway Notebooks, you can always go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. If you click on the Gadget tab, you'll be able to find all of our episodes in high resolution. If you want to send us an email message, you can always reach us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser. This has been Henderson, Nevada. And remember, there's no Uber geek without you. <laughs>